Welcome to the College of Wealth Podcast, the ultimate financial guide to help you understand your financial stresses and how you can build from it. Your lessons won't be in class, and your projects can either save you or earn you money. We host episodes two times a week on Tuesdays and Thursdays to help you reach your financial freedom. Now let's get started with your hosts, Owen Parody and William Goulet. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Owen Parody. I'm here with my co-host, William Goulet. We're proud to present to you the College of Wealth podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Yes, this is a financial podcast that teaches you the latest and greatest information about money because at the end of the day, the, at the end of the day this is a crazy money-making world. Yes, whether it's the end of the day or the beginning of the day. Uh, crazy money making world checks out every time, <laughs> except for last week where there was a spooky money making world. So that was a good episode. I really enjoyed doing that one. It was fun to talk about that. Maybe we'll do that later on as well. Yeah, for some we, other. We need to keep that in mind. More themed episodes, you know. It's fun. Yeah. I really liked it. So without for uh, without without uh, getting too deep into this stuff here, because we talk about money on this podcast. We do mm-hmm. like to indicate that this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Yes, we do and like I to have indi- a also... note. Uh, I I got a note on that. Yes, uh, I it, it is for entertainment purposes, but I disagree with the only part. Um, and I, not only that, I think it's wrong for us to say that. Okay. Uh, wrong for more than one reason. I'll explain. Uh, wrong because it doesn't communicate the full value that we do. Yep. And wrong also because I think it diminishes uh, the value that, well, you personally put in with all your research and stuff like that, and then both of us with our insights. So maybe yes. to communicate that better, we could say something like, it's it's infotainment, like information. Entertainment, I like that. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. That's good. Oh, right on. Let's, let's we'll do that. We'll definitely use that here. Nice. And because I do agree with that. Here at the College of Wealth podcast, we do like to... Uh, indicate that our information is infotainment or our podcast is infotainment because both Will nor myself are, we are not financial advisors by any means. Certainly not me anyways, Owen. I am not either. But, well, true, true. At least we studied in business. We both got our bachelor's degrees in business. I work finance. Will works marketing. And we also do this podcast not only for the love of business, but because we have uh, we actually we have two reasons for doing this podcast here. And yes, what are those I, reasons? Well, and as I like to say, we have three now. One is the valid interest, and not just in any <laughs> way, the Gen Z way. Yes. And uh, another one is uh, cash money. We love to make cash money. Yeah. Um, you know, in times like these, when inflation is outpacing us, we have to start outpacing it by making money. Uh, if we can't do that, then we have to revert to the good old fashioned way. You know, it's uh, cutting expenses, cutting expenses, making sure that make cutting your your method, your your lifestyle to uh, to, to to match you know the increasing costs. In other yes. words, we love to save money, 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 money. It never gets old. It never really, gets old. It, I really like it because I can tell you really don't like doing the money part, but it's part of my <laughs> intro now. <laughs> yes, but it's true though. We do like to make and save money here at the College of Wealth Podcast. And today's episode is going to be all about making money. Okay. And actually, Good. it's not going to be on specific ways. It's I, Actually, before I talk about today's episode... If you haven't done so, make sure to give a five-star review on Apple or on Spotify. It helps us with the algorithm immensely. We don't get what the heck goes on in the background on how they do it. They may have uh, they may have someone in the back there just with a typewriter just saying, put this person at the top. Oh, no, no, yeah. no, never mind. Put, uh, put this person at the top. And it's like, oh, I didn't really like that review. We're going to put them at third. Like, they, I don't. they put a note to their publisher saying... Oh, the College of Wealth podcast should be at the top today. Oh, really? Why is that? And it's like, well, you know, they, they're asking their viewers to put five-star reviews. So, you know. They it, send it by passenger it pigeon because we still haven't seen it yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it arrives at 5 a.m. You know, the publisher comes in and he hears a little... 
opens it up. There you go. Look at that. Amazing. But uh, yes, if, we, if you haven't done so, that'd be greatly appreciated. Go and check us out on YouTube if you like visuals as well. We do uh, have faces behind the voices as well. We do. Go and we subscribe to us. It would uh, give us a like. Comment if you'd like to as well. Go and check us out on Instagram or on TikTok. It would always be appreciated. So without further ado, we got to go and jump into episode 136. Nice. How to spot opportunities for business and prepare for them. Yes, yes, yes. No, you're right because it's not just about you know being competent to do it. It's about being able to to actually spot find them. one. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and and I guess evaluate them too. Yeah. Exactly. So the way we're going to have this formatted is to have four different ways, four different segments on how to identify opportunities mm-hmm. or how to get into a position to identify opportunities and each segment's going to have one way to prepare for them as well. Each will have a point in regards to how to prepare for it. Sweet. So now that we got that covered, we got to go and talk into our statistics, obviously. Yes, that man, of course, of course. Of course, of course. Our first stat is actually about businesses. They're all about businesses today and entrepreneurship. And I thought these stats were pretty cool. One of them I find is just flabbergasting. Nice. We haven't had that in a while, yeah. but I I think it's going to be cool. What is the number one reason why businesses fail? This one's pretty obvious. They're not reinvesting in themselves and they're taking out money from the business. Even broader. Uh, they're not making enough money. <laughs> well, yes, that that is very broad. So I, I applaud you for going <laughs> yeah, that broad. Yes, yes. <laughs> but there's no market need. That is the number one reason. Oh, true, true. To a failed business. No market need. And this is according to CB Insights. The second stat, this one actually can be considered a flabbergasting statistic. Mm -hmm. But what what percentage of small companies were responsible for exported goods from the U.S. in 2015? Oh, my. Uh, What percent? What per, what are small biz, businesses representing as a percent? Yes. Okay. Uh, 55%. Try 97.6%. Ooh. Okay, that is that is flabbergasting, I gotta say. <laughs> yes, it is quite flabbergasting. I was very, very surprised by this. Amazing. But I'm also very happy to see that small businesses account for quite a bit. Well, uh, yeah. for all this and yeah, which it, you, you you're you'd often think that small businesses are sort of limited to their current market but no look at them go man everyone's it, shining it's according to the office of uh ad advo- oh my god Advisory? my french advocacy 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 there we yeah. go my french side was coming out here <laughs> <laughs> for once but, it's you not me uh, uh, of all things, is a website that I got this information from Small Biz Genius that said in total 295,800 and uh, yeah, 295,834 companies exported goods from the U.S. in 2015. Out of that number, 97.6% were actually small businesses, which amount to 287,835 firms overall. Despite the sheer number of entrepreneurs in the U.S., these small businesses only earned 32.9% of the country's total export income, that being $1.3 trillion. Interesting. Okay, right, right, because you can't have all these companies be huge and it come, have like those huge profits. <laughs> yes. Fair enough. Exactly. So our third statistic, this one is also a little bit of a flabbergasting statistic. Okay. Small business failure has declined by how much since 1997? 1977. Okay, so there's a lot more business expertise uh, since 77, 45 years ago. A slick, I don't think that's right, 45, 55? Anyways, uh, it's declined 45%? 30%. Okay, that, that's still really good. That's still it really is good. good. So just to sh- just to show you that yes, a lot of people complain about oh our our grandparents had it made a lot easier. Things were a lot cheaper back then and everything. Yeah, but yeah. the resources were a lot a lot slimmer. What they had available online isn't wasn't available then. 
you had to go and read books and what was available to like what was published was definitely not as high, uh, as valuable or as prominent as what it is today you don't have people d- directing you saying find a mentor find a mentor yeah you know? yeah exactly you wouldn't have that sort of encouragement and last but not least what percentage of self-employed professionals say they would never go back to the traditional employment route? This is according to FreshBooks. 83%. Uh, 97%. Ooh! <laughs> yes. I, I was thinking I was thinking a, a number in the 90s, but I'm like, he already hit one with the small business export. So, uh, 97% to... again. Amazing. And I, I actually know someone that used to be a small business owner and, and went back to the market saying it's a lot less crazy uh, just just in the workforce. Oddly enough, I do know someone as well. But for like because I worked in banking and yeah. I did small business loans in particular, mm-hmm. of everyone that I spoke to, every single person but one said they would never change their lifestyle. They said, and you're right. That it's a wild ride. It is crazy. Sometimes you're there and it's like, okay, well, I'm expecting these payments to be coming in. These payments, yeah. like these, uh, this income to be coming in. I am in overdraft at the moment. So, or if it, or if this doesn't come in, then it's going to be an overdraft and I'm going to have to pay extra mm-hmm. because I know that this pay or this expense is going to be coming out the next day. Yeah. And that's sometimes how it is. And you're like, oh my God. But then they're there and it's like, would you, would you do it any other way? Or would you go back to working uh, to, for someone? No way. No way, yeah. no way, no way. <laughs> what? How do, you, how do you find pleasure in this? <laughs> it, it, no, it's really crazy. I, I was going to say, it's a sign that you and me need to know more entrepreneurs, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. No, I definitely know far more entrepreneurs who enjoy the entrepreneur lifestyle than... And I've seen it many times where it's there and it's like, you know what, like uh, my aunt's an entrepreneur and she loves it. And she said it, you know what, if I want to go out and I want to get my nails done, I can go and do it. And yep. I'm going to get my employee to come cover. Hey, do you think you can come in an extra hour? I'll pay you or whatnot. Yeah, 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 no problem. I finish early. And guess what? I don't need approval for anything like that. Technically, my employee coming in in that sense. Sure. But I... I'm the boss. I get to go and do that. I want to go and expand the store. I want to provide these products. It's not me asking around or whatever. It's freaking, it, it's me who's approving it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, some people like to leave, uh, to leave that industry. Some people like to, to stay. And it's totally fine to be one way or another, which is yep. what I liked about uh, last Thursday's episode, you know. It's uh, how to get rich fast and how to get yes. rich slow. You know, yes. d- different strokes for different folks. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. It's true. So now that we got our statistics put in, uh, put aside here for entrepreneurship, kind of putting in a little bit of a positive vibe here for entrepreneurship here, we're going to be talking about the positive side. We're going to be talking about how to spot those opportunities for businesses and how to prepare for it. Yes, please. And, and our first segment is going to be covering uh, the most obvious way to spot an opportunity is to identify problems that you constantly face with. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. I think it's the most important thing, identifying those problems of so what you deal with day to day. Problems like, oh my God, I hate this toothpaste or I can't find a good toothpaste or there is no, the food, like there's, there isn't food like this. I make this food and I, uh, no one else is making it. it I want to buy it. it There isn't like that or just sporting goods. Like I'm getting rashes, like when I'm working out or something with this gym equipment. Why can't I find equipment that really fits me in that sense, in that way? Just, just look for an example, Mr. Big and Tall for clothing. Oh, I, I'm sure you could tell me about it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Well, people who are big and tall, they literally have a market that's specifically tailored to those people. I am someone who's very tall. So I I actually don't necessarily fit with them because they look for people who are legitimately big Big and tall. Big and tall. Makes sense. I am not big. (laughs) I'm just very tall. Yeah. And so, but there is an entire market towards it and people that needed it because the regular store does not tailor to that. And how does how does that start? Someone who's frustrated. 
that yes. says, I'm big, I'm tall, and I can't find anything for me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm fed up. Yeah, exactly. And so the sometimes to those problems there are solutions. Sometimes there aren't legalities or anything like that. And it can be uh, it can be difficult or there may be legal loopholes or maybe big problems as to why the why they're f- being faced with that but at the same time so, sometimes the problem is not as high like the solution isn't as hard as what you think it may be true true well and, it, I, I i like what you said about uh it, not everything can be solved necessarily because of legal you know implications yes. for example you're like oh man I can't find a way to launder money. How can I? How can I do that? It's like, look, there's a reason that this one isn't resolved for people. <laughs> it's true, and the cool thing of this is, you can actually access this information. The solutions themselves, you can find them online. You can go access it, and uh, you can actually. Sometimes it's just being the middleman. Solving okay. that problem is just that the solution is available to companies mm-hmm. and the public just doesn't have access to those products itself. Some products like industrial products are awesome for cleaning. Just look at the cleaning agents. Like, um, I'm just trying to say, I think like mechanics get it a lot, like the orange uh, paste for cleaning hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, the I one that has a little bit of uh, it, the it's beads like, inside. But yeah, yeah. Well, not beads because it's illegal in Canada, but the uh, the it's a, an abrasive, it's abrasive substance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've used it as well. It's amazing, and I love the orange smell to it. Really, really nice. But that uh, in, industrial uh, industrial settings stuff. Yeah, and then it's available to the public now, and people are like, "Oh my gosh, I could use this for more than just fixing cars and stuff like that." Exactly. No, you're right. You're right. And that's, that's, that's a great, that such a great idea too. And <laughs> it sometimes you're right. It's just as simple as taking something that's used for industrial or work purposes and saying, why don't I have this just every day? And then you just <laughs> yeah. frame yourself in that market and boom, you're good to go. You identified a, you identified a solution that's already been solved, but for commercial purposes and just inputted it to the public sector. Exactly. And so the cool thing of this episode is I have actual case studies for every segment. Oh, nice. And the first one that we have for the first segment for identifying problems uh, that people face with is uh, honey.com. Oh, okay. Yeah. People were faced with all these websites that were really good at like finding coupons and everything that you could use. Great, awesome, awesome websites. That I could, but there became a point where there were too many websites and these coupons were expiring and it was just a revolving door of bad coupon after bad coupon. So people were just stuck with that kind of stuff and they were fed up of it. And in comes honey.com where they decide to go and provide a huge rep- repertoire of the coupons, searching all these websites, identifying it, and then doing all the legwork for you trying them out for you too Mm -hmm, exactly so you don't even have to do anything at all and i find that's an awesome uh someone found a pain point that they're fed up of dealing with and then they decided to go and address it and it's not it's not a massive infrastructure and i'm sure it didn't cost them millions of dollars to build this uh how can i call this tool yeah because this uh, service or yeah, this extension. It's literally a Google yeah, uh, a Google extension. extension. Yeah. And I'm sure with several thousands of dollars, they're able to go and build that. They market it, and now look at where they've gone with this. Huge success. And, you know, the fact that they were offering it for free, too, is... Uh, Even better. Yeah, yeah. Makes it very marketable. And the, the way... And uh, circling back to the best way to prepare for this, I guess it's, this is our one prepare trait for okay. uh spotting opportunities is to always have a pen and paper on hand oh yeah, i have true. so many pens and papers or pads and everything i and it's driving me nuts i'm waiting i'm waiting for my dad to come to where i live yeah 
because I have an eight foot whiteboard and I usually write everything down on this thing. I think I remember seeing that before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I used to have this thing all the time and I'd write whatever came, I jot down whatever came to, to mind. And yeah. if, it, if I had an idea, well, I wrote down a business plan or a business model canvas and it was awesome to just brainstorm ideas. Sometimes it's the most stupid, the stupidest things, but sometimes it's stuck and it was like, you know what? I'm running with this. And, um, it also helped with my my schoolwork and stuff like that, but sure, sure. it was a, it was a way for me to organize my my mind and my thoughts in, in your favorite way of jotting down notes, you know. Yes, uh, it, it and it doesn't always have to be. Uh, I'm gonna add this pen and paper, you know. If uh, maybe someone really loves their notes app, your phone, exactly. Um, if a notes app works for you, great. If you have a, maybe a partner or a significant other that you you love you two love bouncing ideas to each other, um, you, you can literally just text them and always mm -hmm. keep referring back to it. Yes. Or a popular thing back in the day was voice memos. <laughs> yes. Where people would say, "Oh, uh, here's an idea," or "Here's my my next thought," or "Here's my next item that I need to do in order to make that thought happen." Yes, it, and it's totally true. And. But whatever you do, have that access to you at all time. If And I've seen so many times, I've had it myself, where I've woken up from a dream or something and I'm like, I have an idea. And then you think, you know what? I'll write it down tomorrow morning. Do not do that. Write it down. Yeah. Write it down like ASAP. I don't care if it's a bad idea or not. You're, you're, your physically conscious self will be able to evaluate that later. Yeah, but you may have just slept over a million dollar idea just because you were too lazy to go and take one second to write it down. You could even write it in a text message and not send it. So true. I I, I thought of a joke uh, during my sleep once, and I thought it was the funniest <laughs> thing during my sleep. And then I I don't remember it exactly, but I woke up I'm like, no, this joke doesn't. It doesn't hold up. <laughs> I think it's funnier <laughs> when I sleep. <laughs> what are your tired self jokes there? Yeah. So now that we have uh, identifying problems that you're currently faced with, we got to jump into our second segment, and that's finding gaps where the market is missing. Mm, yes. Okay. So this is, I know it kind of correlates to the first one, but they all correlate with one another. But yeah. it, a lot of people think, oh, well, everything's been invented. Well, guess what? Gaps are created literally all the time on a day-to-day -day basis. And we have a, an evolving door of technology, laws and regulations, change, uh, and in changing consumer behavior. Like I'm saying laws as well because sometimes they're being lifted. Hey, like we want more competition in this industry. We want to go and restrict, uh, give more laws. Like I know in Ontario, the baking laws have been lifted a little bit. So it's a little bit easier for people to sell home goods. Oh, without... really? Yes. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer, but this oh, is from neither, research man. on my own doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but exactly that. So that's an opportunity for people who t uh, to sell home goods. Uh, yeah. From their own household. Yeah, that's fantastic. And that was a gap that people are able to fill a little bit easier now without jumping through all the legal hoops. Yeah, Technology, true. Uber, or things like that. Or even uh, a, a product that people stop supporting. You know, um, it, let's say uh, let's say shoes. You know, it, you'll buy a shoe and the shoe's worn out and then they, maybe they don't support after a while. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, this type of shoe I know how to fix. And it, I, I fixed it, and maybe you're able to start a, a company that's specialized to these unique types of shoes. Yeah, oh, for or, sure. Or any other type of stuff. So it could be something that was supported before, but now there's no more support. Well, you can hop in. You yes, know? exactly. And you're you're pinning you're you do a pinpoint from your expertise there. Yeah. Imagine uh, uh, here's another opportunity. Imagine uh, fifteen fifteen years ago trying to sell a Nintendo 64. Yes. It'd sell for 60 bucks, 80 bucks maybe, you know, it wouldn't have nothing crazy. But nowadays, yeah, there's a whole market created for retro gaming and now yep. the prices have started going up and up and up and up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So 
it, that's the kind of opportunities you can spot by that gap that's being created. Yep. Very, very well said. And actually, that's the one thing that I find that's important to indicate here is that companies also fail to evolve. There are many companies that fail to evolve over time. Yes. And when they fail to evolve, that's where opportunities arise. Absolutely. And the best scenario to that is uh, Netflix and Blockbuster. That was yes. our case of we've, we've heard this story a million times. But Blockbuster failed to evolve with technology, and they thought they were on top of the world. They did try to become Netflix at one point when they uh, – Blockbuster at one point tried to create the same system as Netflix, mm -hmm. but it was too late. Netflix was the go-to place to go. You know, I, I, I heard a story specifically about Blockbuster where there was this one executive that said we should try to do this. You know, and and uh, to try a similar model, and the board refused it. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. They said, actually, we're going to lose our seven percent late fee, which represented a good amount of their revenue. Mm -hmm. So, because they decided not to lose out on their late fee, they lost out on their everything. entire business. They lost everything. But that's exactly what ends, what ended up happening. The the person or the founder of Netflix literally created Netflix as a retaliation on the late fee. True. Yeah. True. Great point. They were so mad about getting a late fee from Blockbuster that they created a company and destroyed Blockbuster. Live by the late fee, die by the late fee. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. That's literally what happened. And the cool thing of this, though, is we all are passionate about different things. So if you're passionate about, let's say, guitars, or you're passionate about a sport, or you're passionate about a hobby of yours, you can connect the niche that you have or connect to the, those types of communities, and you can increase your odds at getting uh, filling their voids by connecting with them. Mm. So I kind of sort of circle back to what I said originally at the start there. You can connect with them by connecting with them. But no, <laughs> you could connect better with people in a more niche community by identifying their pain points because at that point, you're specifically tailoring a solution to their problems. Yes. And, and that's what people pay for. Yes. It's a solution to a problem. That's the most boiled down version, you know? Look at keto. Look at the all natural or the vegan products. Mm -hmm. They're so specialized. The yeah. regular Joe who's interested in, in food is not to like, if they're not vegan, they're not going to purchase the vegan bar or the vegan product because it's selling for twice the price. Yeah. It's Why true. are they going to go for it? They're not interested. But to the person who's vegan, oh my gosh, a product that is specifically tailored to me. I am going to pay the money for that. Yeah. And it subscribes to my lifestyle. It subscribes to uh it, it, even ideology sometimes yes you know? mm -hmm. it's all on uh all all on the placement of the uh the product placement or the exactly the brand of the, uh, the product and yep. you only start doing that by filling the gaps that's missing within the pro uh, within the, the market actually i'd love to throw in the quote of the day here yeah uh and it, who we're quoting this week is uh i'll give you a hint He's about pride and he's about power. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's right. That's right. We're quoting The, the My Rock. My good old buddy, not... D-Wayne. <laughs> yeah, D-Wayne is, uh, and surprisingly, I didn't decide to do that as the quote of the day. It's about pride. It's about power. That would have been pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, I, I, let, let's, I think it's relevant to, let's say, the, the keto bars. Here's what he says. He says, blood, sweat, and respect. The first two you give, the last one you earn. I like it. Yes. And uh, and it, blood and sweat, it's it's the hard work, right? It's the developing yes. of the product, and then the respect is uh, by positioning yourself as a as let's say a keto or a vegan uh, product, you actually earn the respect of the people who have very similar values and have put in the same amount of work as you and sacrifices. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. so well, that's why that's why they say respect is not given; it's earned. Exactly, exactly. And that's the quote of the day. 
I like it. It's true. It's a good point because it's true. Blood and sweat. People don't have to give you respect for putting in all your effort and everything. Absolutely. It's earned. Yes, exactly. Very well said, Will. Good quote. I like it. Thank you. So now that we have that quote, it actually ends our second segment. It brings into our third segment. And this one I like because I've done it myself. I mean, I've done the other two as well. But Mm -hmm. um, looking at trends or, yeah, looking at trends to find emerging patterns. Are we we talking Google trends here? Yes. And the cool thing about starting a company is you are so malleable. You can switch so quickly. Versus yep. a company who wants to start something. Yes, they got the capital. Yes, they got the budget for marketing and ROI, or not ROI, but uh, R and D, I should say. Mm-hmm. But they don't have. Uh, you're moving a mountain when you're doing different changes with a company. Yeah, if, if even adding a product, the company's go to is we already have an existing customer base. How can we appeal to them? Yes, uh, because you know, keeping a customer is twenty five cents. Getting a new one is a dollar. So they're always already thinking in that mass aspect, in that huge volume of sales. You yes. know, they they won't be content with a new product that does, sells ten thousand dollars a year. Let's say. yes, right? yes, exactly. It's true. Is and it's a the cool thing of this. If you're a new company or you're looking for opportunities of some kind, it's like you know what I. I had okay success selling teddy bears. Well, you know what? I I'm gonna start selling. Uh, I'm gonna start selling vintage dolls now instead. Mm. You could go and do that. Yeah. You can it go. Seems and like do a that. logical transition. <laughs> but you're able to go and do that transition on your own without having to worry of any kind because yep. uh, there's no executive board. There's no manager. There's no CEO, you are all that. Yeah, yeah. So it, that's a big advantage. Yeah, you don't have to report to anyone, right? And the cool thing of these websites, so things like Google Trends, and I have it as well, semrush.com. Okay. Uh, paid service, FYI. But uh, you can find topics within subtopics as well. So you oh, can get yeah. very, very particular in this kind of thing. Yeah. And like what? So uh, exactly like we were saying. So let's say there's a specific topic or um, let's say dolls. Well, a subtopic, collectible dolls. You can go and look at search trends for collectible dolls. Or then you can go into an even more precise. uh, Fisher Price collectible dolls. Or I was going to say Thai collectible dolls. If you like the the, the Bean Babies. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm not very familiar with it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You don't know Bean Babies? No, I, I don't. There was, it was all the trend in the 90s. Really? You don't remember the the huge thing where uh, a, a, co- a couple divorced they, and they had, I think it was something like thousands of oh. Bean Babies and they had to literally divide their estate or their assets and Bean Babies in front of the court. I think I saw something about that just recently, actually. <laughs> that yeah, funny. it was a wild craze in the 90s that came crashing down because they're worth next to nothing now. Oh, really? Oh, my yes. God. Yes. But needless to say, like you can go and look into that on Google Trends or SEM Rush. They'll show you how the flow goes. And it's cool, like if you, especially if you see during Christmas time, if there's specific patterns or so, something like that. You'll see it go up and down and up and down and up and over the years. It's very, very cool. For example, don't try to start selling Mariah Carey's uh, Christmas CD <laughs> in January. You know, that's more of a seasonal thing. <laughs> yeah, you, you're long gone at that point. You're going to have to wait another 10 months. Yeah, 10 months. That's on, right. That's on, right. On nev- tomorrow. Uh, wait, no, not, not tomorrow. Uh, um, you gave it but... up. You gave it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're recording on Halloween here. <laughs> Uh, but tomorrow, November 1st, is when you're probably going to start hearing Mariah Carey's music here. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. And for the time of listening, you guys are long gone. You're screwed. You have already listened to it a dozen times at this point. Exactly. You could you could recite it back to us. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's totally true. You can listen, uh, not listen, but you can watch this kind of stuff. 
And um, on top of that, you can see who searches this kind of stuff as well. So which countries are more apt to look at this information? So is mm. it Canada? Is it United States? Is it, uh, is it the UK? Is it Australia? And their trends within the countries as well. Google is literally a billion dollar corporation. Yes. For a reason. Yeah, it's a multi-billion yeah. dollar corporation and somehow they have only a website but there's a reason why people pay millions and millions of dollars for their information yeah and, and that's and you know their their money making is not by providing you search results that's not how they make their money <laughs> no it's the ads and the information available within it yes it and actually a bit of humor for the example for today is um so during the presidential election for uh joe biden joe biden versus donald trump <laughs> uh, <laughs> joe biden <laughs> <laughs> well uh uh there was for the seven day trend for moving to canada saw its highest peak right after uh one hour after the first presidential debate Oh yeah, I remember. Didn't that crash our website, our our, our immigration website? I think so. Yes. <laughs> so politics aside, on whatever platform you're a part of, th the <laughs> the seven day trend, there was the highest peak after that first election. And imagine if you if you had the insight to do that and you were prepared and you had vacation packages to Canada or, <laughs> or immigration you know tourism. What? If you were smart, in all honesty, I, I wouldn't have seen anything else but a train wreck for that presidential elec uh, not election, but that debate. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care what platform you were on. If you forecasted that or predicted that to happen, you would have made so much money. It's so true. much money. It's true. So Absolutely. I, very, it's true. And so the best way you can prepare in your sense uh, with Google Trends and stuff like that, learn to do SEO logistics and understand how websites work and the optimization with things like that. Use SEMrush. And it's all about uh, marketing, uh, yeah, search engine marketing, search okay. engine optimization, and how those websites work. And if you're able to understand it and you're able to catch on to upcoming trends and – maybe you'd be able to go and start a business with those opportunities a lot quicker than everyone. Imagine if you, yeah, like imagine if you were able to catch on to the fidget spinner craze just before it started. It would have been Boku bucks. Let's just say huge, huge. So now that we have that, we're going to go into our fourth way to spot an opportunity yes. our fourth segment. This one I find is going to be a fun one. Okay. And we have a fun like the, story like fun. about this. And it's to travel abroad to see how the world works. Oh, true, true. Because there's difference in cultures. A huge difference. Exactly. Not every country works the same way. Just look at Canada and the United States. Yes, they're very uh, very similar in ways. But you go to Texas and compare to Canada, they don't necessarily – They uh, it's going to be different. Go to Alabama. It's going to be different. There's, there, I mean, the United States is massive in retrospect compared to European countries. Yeah. But exactly that. Everyone uh, works differently. Everything. Uh, everyone has different opportunities, and everyone has different cultures that they're faced with. So traveling, if you want a massive culture shock, go across the world. Yeah, yeah. Go going overseas is such a huge change, man. Yeah, exactly, and you will get to see how different people work day to day, how, what they use, what they, uh, what companies they're profit off of. Like that was a huge thing. And I'm talking, this is not the example for this scenario, but things like Facebook. Yeah. Facebook right now is struggling so much, not only because of meta and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, I should be calling it meta, but sure. Facebook has gotten to a point where they've, capped out at how many people they've uh, they could acquire mm. onto the onto facebook has capped out at how many people they can have on facebook.com so yeah. they're forced to try and pivot and that's why they created those incentives to try and create uh, 
get computers in Africa and try, like, I mean, to the third world countries. I'm not saying all of Africa is a third world country, but sure. uh, even though Africa is not a country, it's a continent. I'm trying to cover my thought process. No, here, I know. get it. I get it. You know what? It, the, uh, that's a, a, initiatives that Facebook had was in 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 Africa and also in third world in third world countries and initiatives to boost users. Exactly. And that was uh, that was what they were targeting. And same thing for Meta. They wanted to go and target to go uh, in the metaverse. It wasn't because they were trying to grow. Yeah, they wanted to be ahead of the curve. Who knows what it's going to be like in 10 years time. Might have been way too ahead of the the curve of its curve, but Yeah. It's because they they plateaued, so they're trying to go to different countries to target that. Uh, another big thing that you can find going from country to country is sometimes you can spot trends ahead of time. Uh, if, if, I'll give you an example. Elon Musk, he's looking at, uh, he recently just purchased Twitter. Yes. And he thought, well, here's my vision for Twitter. I want to do everything. He's like, you go to China and you have WeChat on there that you're able to mm -hmm. talk, you're able to pay, you have, uh, you know, everything that you need yep. on there. He's like, let's just do that with Twitter. And I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, you know what? By looking at a different culture, he can have a five to ten year plan of what to do with this business, you know? Yes, exactly. And actually, that's where I was going to go in, uh, say, is because we're talking about different countries not every country grows at the same rate as your own, whether it be quicker, whether it be slower. So those are opportunities that you can penetrate within their markets as well. Maybe you have a product that you see that's every day in Canada that you can go over there and say, hey, actually, this stuff we use all the time. And they're like, oh, my gosh, where has this been all my life? Yeah, yeah, true, true. And, but that's exactly how it is. The logistics are different and it becomes a little bit more difficult when you're trying to sell to different countries. Mm -hmm. But the example that I had for today was actually Red Bull for this. Okay. I, I, I'm all ears. I'm all ears. So Red Bull started in the mid 1980s. Yeah. And it actually originally started from East, uh, East Asian drink. And it was marketed to people like when driving and stuff like that. Yeah, and the creator itself wanted himself wanted uh, saw that and said like he was getting tired at the wheel, and they went to a gas station. Why don't you? And then his partner or what, who he was doing business with or something like that, uh, said, "Why don't you try this little drink that we have?" And he's like, "I mean, sure." And then he says, "Holy shoot, this woke me up. What the heck is this?" It's Blue Cow Energy Drink. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i guess exactly but yeah and for this case uh we didn't have that in america we didn't have sure. energy drinks we had coffee that was the energy drink and so people were just really surprised by this and he decided to bring it to europe and then he brought it to america and it's oh my gosh this is insane we need this and that's yeah. how red bull started was off of with it by other countries and, and, and then their, their positioning too they just nailed positioning oh uh, really between good. their red bull gives you wings commercials to you know sort of include everyone and then their their x games positioning and the red bull you know all these extreme crazy events yeah extreme high energy and things like that it, you easily make that association now well exactly and you wouldn't be able to make that association without going to other countries true true like, I mean, just grasping the culture or anything. And that's actually the way to prepare. That's the last point there to prepare, to look out for opportunities yeah. is to observe genuine culture of each country and its efficiency. And how are things done there? How are actually, like, what type of access of information, what type of access of goods do they have that can actually help them? Because I've seen so many things from Japan that have been kind of that have come here. I find Japan is so far ahead of the future with their stuff. Sometimes it's true, not even true. funny, and so we they try to reflect a lot of how we are in America, but America doesn't even realize that we do a lot of the things that Japan does. It, it's so weird how that relationship works. It's almost like we look at each other 
and copy each other. Well, it, you know what? We all have a little bit of learn to learn. From we, each other, yeah, you know? yeah. We all have a little bit of learning to yeah, a little bit of learning from each other to do, and that's you, the best way to do it is to just look at how other countries, other uh, people within other countries, do things, and yeah. you can find opportunities that you may not have realized were right in front of you. True, true. Honestly, and maybe it, it's a it, it's a problem that's solved uh, over there. That maybe it does. It, well, here's the thing: you got to be careful because it not only do you have to solve the problem over where you are, but people want to have it solved. Need to yes. want to have it solved. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> there has to be a need to solve that salute that problem. Yes, and a desire. Even if the problem's there, if people are like, "Yeah, but what do I care? That's fine." Yeah, it's like ah. You can see a business flop that, that <laughs> for sure. So with that being said, that is episode 136, how to spot opportunities for business, uh, for businesses and how to prepare for them. Very cool. Very fun. That was a fun episode. I awesome. really liked it. And that concludes episode or uh, the college of wealth podcast. I should say, my name is own parody. I'm here. My co-host William Goulet. I am. And once again, this is a college of wealth podcast. Peace. This is the College of Wealth Podcast. <laughs> this has been your daily dose of motivation with the College of Wealth Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. It would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for listening. And until next episode.